Hello and welcome back to DK Vine Done Slow Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest. I'm Heil Russell and we are. Well, we're gonna rescue Donkey Kong today. Let's just set out to do that and it will be done. So jump back into our save state here. Oh man, can you imagine, like, it's been two weeks since I've done one of these streams. Can you imagine having to sleep at your school for two weeks? Because I always like to imagine that the Kongs, uh, whenever you're not playing the game, right, uh, the, the Kongs stop off at a Kong Helper's location, and they spend the night there, or however long it is until the next time you play. So, like, when I was a kid, I would imagine that... Uh, Diddy and Dixie would like, oh, let's sleep uh, over at the Monkey Museum tonight. Or let's let's go sleep, you know, at uh, Funky, Funky's Flights 2. That would be a fun place to crash. But yeah, in my, in my head, you know, they, they didn't like make camp or anything. Or it, even the adventure didn't just take place in one day, right? I, I like to imagine it was taking place in real time to my own life. And uh, I, I still think that's a fun way of viewing things. Obviously, some games, the very nature of the story prohibits that. Like, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, by design, takes place within a day. But it, it's still a, a fun notion when the game doesn't set those narrative parameters on you. So... Alright, today we are going to <sighs> toxic tower <laughs> i'm uh i'm not dreading this so much toxic tower is fine it's it has a reputation but it's honestly not that bad and i say that knowing full well i'm probably gonna die a few times here This is one of those multi-animal buddy showcases that uh, I think the, the latter two Donkey Kong Country games really like to engulf in the latter two of the original trilogy, of course. I'm not talking about Returns and Tropical Freeze, for they had no animal buddy showcases in those. Oh, and see there, I take the toxic plunge, and I'm dead. This is, uh, at least I got the hero coin, right? Off to a promising start if I've gotten the hero coin. So just the very notion, this is K. Rule's own castle, right? And there's a, a... A bit of the Kremlins that you might think are not in my backyard, you know, kind of principles where they build these toxic factories on Donkey Kong Island and the Northern Kremisphere. And... You were like, oh, well, they're doing that because they don't want their home island polluted. But Crocodile Isle is a cesspool, and I think they've already, like, really just done a number on it. Up to and including the fact that K. Rool's castle, for some reason, has toxic waste spewing into it. <laughs> it's never really clarified why that is, but... Alright, this... Not getting the hero coin this time around has given me enough breathing room from the toxic sludge. This is playing with the uh, the slime climb. Oh shit! Well, it's playing with the slime climb mechanics instead instead of a invulnerable piranha ch champing at you. It just the water itself is is putrid and toxic. So now we got Squawks. Squawks can get ahead of it fairly quick. Oh, Mr. Kaboing. Yeah, sometimes you, you want to rush. Ah! 
Wow. Hello to Mr. Kyle's Twitch in the live stream. Ooh, Toxic Tower. What fun, they said. It's certainly a level of the 1995 Super Nintendo video game Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a fair assessment to make. <laughs> um... I really like these Animal Buddy handoff levels. Hong Kong Country 3 would have a couple as well. But, um... I don't know. There's something great about... Being rattly and then jumping into squawks. Alright, there's nothing over there. I don't know why. Sometimes I think, oh, there's something I should get over there. And there isn't. It's fine. Ah, I knew I was going to be dying a little bit in this session. That's fine. It's just, this is the uh, the last normal stage in... Um... Okay, that doesn't do anything. Uh, this is the last normal stage in K. Rule's Keep, so of course things are going to be getting a bit hard. <laughs> I actually think Chain Link Chamber is a bit harder of a stage because... Uh, it's it's less about the gimmick chasing you, and it's more about just the stage itself being very, very difficult with enemy placement and what have you. This one's actually a little bit more forgiving in that regard. Although, you know, you still get some tricky enemy placement. Also, just think about the, the logic behind this being K. Rule's castle. Like, what mad person would live in a place like this? Like, how do you even navigate this if you don't have wings? I don't even know. Alright, here's the squits. Squitter himself. And then, ah, but what's this? a bonus barrel. That's right. And you get blasted up into the brambles. It was always unclear to me as a kid if the bonus barrels and bonus levels themselves like took place within some sort of pocket universe, like a, a separate dimension, or if they were just like elsewhere uh, on the island. And I, I, I've fallen along the lines of they're elsewhere on the island. There are pocket dimensions in the DKU, but that's more Banjo-Kazooie's world than it is um, the bonus levels. That would that would just be uh, madness if you, you slip into alternate dimensions that, that often. So you can see the, the sludge has reached its pinnacle. It can't go climb any f farther. You can't just drown in here. Oh, well. oh, and it recedes just as you leave. And I got all the bonuses there. How about that? Let me, uh... Start and select. Alright, now let's go to Funky... And let's go back to Glimmer's Gallium, because I really want to get this hero coin out of the way. The only hero coin I don't have so far in the game. I could not for the life of me figure out where this was when I was playing through it. First time around in this session, this playthrough. I know it's going to be in a hidden chamber somewhere. So I'm just gonna... Find this hopefully really quickly. No, 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 no. Ah, damn it. I was hoping not to get eaten. Because I want Diddy to be in a lead when I uh, get to Stronghold Showdown. And just render that whole bit in Toxic Tower pointless.
So we get to see Glimmer one more time. The most uh, overlooked animal buddy in this game. Even Quawks. You know. Even Quawks is not as overlooked in the long run as Glimmer. And, and Glimmer is one of the rare animal buddies to have gotten on the, uh, the cover of a of a game just not a game he's actually in hmm I will get Diddy back at least That, that fucking lockjaw is the bane of my life right now. I never know when there's going to be a hidden passage in one of these little nooks. Well, at least the DK barrel regenerated. Yeah, I got that bonus. Oh. Oh my god, there are these chambers in here. Um. And they're numbered. Oh, f I completely. I completely forgot about these. Okay, and then there's a four. Yep. Okay. Well, there we go. There it is. Figuring it out in real time. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I always forget, like, I not always forget about that, but that hero coin in particular, and there's like four chambers around the bonus area, I will remember that as, as like a, a concrete piece of knowledge that I have in this game. And then over time, I will always forget it. Like, there, there'll be a period where I will know that for maybe a year, and then it falls out of my head. All right, so, hey, we've already uh, gotten the exclamation mark and hero coin marker for K. Rule's Keep. That is great. So now all there is to do in K. Rule's Keep is go to Stronghold Showdown. Hello to Jeffren in the live stream, by the way. This is a big moment. We're about to rescue Donkey Kong, or so we think. Um, let's let's go. Stronghold showdown. Triumphant, triumphant music. We got there's Donkey Kong not tied up in ghost ropes, and then so this this part confused me as a kid. So here we got a little animated bit on the map screen of Captain K. Roll escaping upwards. Um, do, 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 do. Just a, I, I love these unique moments on the map screen where you've got like, different music and this uh, this ominous kind of tone that will immediately go away once you uh, enter somewhere. But. Um, Oh, that part confused me as a kid because I think Nintendo Power in their like descriptions for the levels in the issue that came out Friday, I, th I think it was mailed to subscribers the week before Donkey Kong Country 2 actually came out in the Americas because remember it was delayed until the first week of December in the Americas and uh, so the issue was actually out before Dunk on Country 2 was officially out here. And so th they had like a, a little description of all of the main worlds and levels, Sans the Lost World in the game. And um, the way they described it is you would be rescuing Donkey Kong in Stronghold Showdown and everything after that, Donkey Kong's safe. Donkey Kong's at home. Uh, and so I was operating under the assumption that the whole thing where his uh, rope raises 
was it just the way of the game getting him off screen and that you had actually rescued him and at this point he just goes home to recover or something and you go chasing after k rule uh so i blame nintendo power for completely cutting the legs off of that moment that rare worked so hard to convey with the the limited means they had to convey on a super nintendo game in 1995 but yeah uh I thought Donkey Kong was rescued. So for Screecher Sprint, uh, I, I was like, oh, well, at least Donkey Kong's safe. At least we got him home. Yeah. So, a little fake out. You think that's going to be the K-Roll boss fight. Of course, it isn't the K-Roll boss fight. Uh, but you can re-enter here. And you've just got an empty chamber. There are banana coins hidden above. And you can actually use this as a, uh, nothing up there? Okay. You can actually use this as just an infinite spawning point for banana coins. You can just start, select, start, select, start, select. Or just leave that way. You don't even need to start and select. It's not that. And that will just get you right back to the main map screen. Um, of course, the Donko Country 2 remake on the Game Boy Advance added a real boss fight there. They completely like did away with the bit, the fake out, and they just added the kerosene fight. And I think, you know, it's better the way the original game designed it as like psyching the player out to, you know, beat K. Rule. Like, oh, I'm gonna finally face K. Rule. And uh, no, there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more in between. Um, and K. Rule's running from you. I mean, I think that conceptually works better. Uh, but if you are just making a remake that you assume several people, like m m the majority of people who play it will have played the original or like longtime fans, then it's good to throw in something different for the value and the novelty's sake. Um, and canonically, I guess both events were true um, in the in the timeline of events. What happened was the Andrew Stronghold showdown. Donkey Kong gets pulled away, they start to give chase, and then when they get to the rooftop, or, or whatever, Kerosene uh, attacks. And we just don't see Kerosene attacking in the Super Nintendo. The GBA version fills in the details. Alright. Um, but of course, the, the Super Nintendo version will always be the definitive telling of the events. It just uh, it, It's mostly just trivia what the GBA version adds. So here we go, Screech's Sprint. We don't even have um, access to anything else right now. We just have Screech's Sprint in the Flying Croc. I just want to point out like how ludicrous this world is. Uh, so we are high above Crocodile Isle right now. We are in the clouds above Crocodile Isle in the Rare Archipelago. And somehow there is just a bramble nest Attached to something, um, I, what I think happened was the flying croc flew off and got its ladder tangled up in some brambles, pulled the brambles out, and so this, ma this mass of brambles is hanging off the ladder. So this whole situation is very precarious. If this was a latter-day Donkey Kong Country game, a, a Retro Studios Donkey Kong Country game, I'm sure th these would be swaying and we would feel the, the real... Um, just nauseating height of it all but it's a little bit more laid back being that this is you know still the super nintendo oh my god all right so this is discounting that bit in animal antics the um the final bramble stage in the game and you can see i love how it looks more dead i don't know it, it everything's browny and just um dry crackly and that purplish sky is such a great touch it's amazing how different this can feel from bramble scramble they do such a great job of masking the reuse of assets in these archetypes So I think I need Dixie. Yeah. 
I need Dixie to get up to the bonus area there. It's fine. This little bit, this little bit before you get to Screech is, uh, oh my god. Yeah, no. Surprisingly difficult. Actually, when I'm replaying this, when I'm getting you know, screenshots or video footage or whatever I'm doing, I, I always stumble with this bit before Screech more than I stumble with Screech. Alright, took out more of them that time. Get a running start. There we go. I just need to preserve both Kongs. That means not hitting brambles, not hitting baddies. Ah, damn it! Well, I'm gonna need Dixie. Maybe I throw her. I don't know. Memory. Memory is telling me that doesn't work well. I can try it, though. Ah, whoa. Diddy is a little bit more nimble on the ropes, so I'm using him. Yeah, I can't throw her because they won't be able to hit the ropes then, so this is just, uh... Ah, there we go. I think, I think... Oh, no! Damn it! I was going to say, I think you have to just use uh, Diddy there. Oh, they're going to throw me the brambles. Oh, that somehow didn't kill me. Okay. Maybe I can get up there. Oh, no. Um, that's, that's not going to... That's not going to work. That's just, that's just not going to work. Those mini neckies are just regenerated and they're waiting. All right, use Diddy for the first part. Don't die. And I'll be fine. Nope, 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 nope. Don't blow me up. It's always inconsistent how many of those I can take out. Those being clingers. Sorry, I should use their names. We're a long way from the rigging ship mast of the uh, early parts of the game. I like that clingers are still here, and now they're just climbing on deadened vines hanging off of brambles entwined in a ladder. K. Rule's giant uh, Hella vessel, Hella carrier. All right. Oh, damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Oh, I can't start and select. I have to just die. Well, I'm draining my lives here. Jeez. Jeez. This is harder than I thought. I talked about Toxic Tower having a reputation. Screech's sprint has a reputation, but usually for, you know, the, the, bo the not boss fight, but the, the race with Screech himself. Just such a nice contrast, the purples again, the purples of the sky against the orange of the clinger. Alright. Nice, nice. Okay, now... Give these zingers a wide berth and evade the Cato Nine Tails. No, no, no! Fuck! Oh my god, that worked. Okay. These mini neckies don't concern me. And now. And now. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh well, it doesn't matter. I'm up there. I'm up there. Okay. 
Whew. Whew. Now I have to find the token, though. Oh, yeah, you, you need Dixie here. This is one of those, uh, surprise. Luckily, they give you the DK barrel. They're not complete sadist. Oh, fuck. Fuck! Is it, where is it gonna drop me? Okay, so I just have to... Oh! Nice throw, Dixie. At least they give you that DK barrel, so you're set. Like, you can keep trying this. But still, it gives me the, the palm sweats just a bit. All right. I can't, I, I can't trust where it's taking me. Yeah, see? You really just have to spam Dixie's helicopter spin here. Nice, nice. 74. 74 creme coins. One away. And where is the last one? Not in this level. Obviously, you're going to get it a little bit later. There's the star barrel. And there's Squawks. And up ahead, there he is. Screech. Yes, Screech. Screech. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All right. I, I want to talk about Screech before I actually race Screech, you know? I have a whole thing about Screech. Screech uh, also appeared on the game box along with Squawks and Engard. Uh, Screech is the first and so far only uh, antagonist animal buddy. K. Rules animal buddy. K. Rules. Captain K. Rules parrot. Screech is amazing i love screech i love that it just looks like a sinister variation of the parrots that we've seen thus far squawks and quacks and squawk and uh you know later we'll have tox funky's own personal animal buddy but this is k rules parrot and you gotta race him here and when i say you gotta race him here there is an exploit that i'm well aware of where you can actually just go over the, the thing and it doesn't actually start the race. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it happened. Get over it. Got the star barrel. Give me a break. So anyway, um... I'm well aware of that. I think I'm just gonna do the race proper. Because, uh... Let's just do it as the game intended. There is a little... Boom, boom, boom. A little shortcut down there. I can't get too hung up on shortcuts, though. Why? Because I've got to be on the lookout for the hero coin. And you see, they want you to go down there. And I'm like, no, no, no. I got to get that hero coin. I got it. I got to get it. And unlike Rickety Race, this is essential beating Screech. How essential is it? Well, if you don't, you die. Your very, like, life force is tied to beating Screech. I don't even know where Screech is right now. So this is just, like, it's really a, a mind game. It's psyching you out, trying to make you feel panic. It's not that hard. Even racing Screech isn't that hard. I know a lot of people use the exploit and just, like, make sure the race is never actually activated but he beat me so that's what happens i died and partly because i got the hero coin right um at least that's out of the way now so now i can just focus on beating screech and you can get right up i mean You can kind of be a cheating cheater. Screech plays the game more fairly than you would imagine. K. Rule's evil parrot animal buddy plays it, but. It's not like a Diddy Kong racing boss where he, you know, runs before green or go. Of course, Screech. Screech can get past the zingers, no problem. So he's got a little built-in favorability there. So like, 
all, all the elements are working against the Kongs and Squawks here. And are in favor of Screech. Damn it. Mr. Kyle's Twitch says, I love the music in the Screech Race. Such a great composition for one single section of a level. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... There's a couple tracks in this game like that, where they just use it one level. This really was a, a fruitful period for David Wise, wasn't it? He was just overflowing with songs and tracks and ideas even <laughs> okay misjudged that whoa and yeah you, you know if you go too quickly you're just gonna run beak first into the brambles which is you know by design but it's also rough when you're used to uh having the kongs underneath squawks and and you know that you can rest on the brambles a little bit like that mm, here you're just squawks and his naked self oh fuck. i want to do this right right like i i don't want to use the exploit because i feel like even though it's in the game, um, it's not true to the spirit of the developer's intent. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. I would still rather do this race than that early part again. That early part of Scrooge's Sprint is one of the most deceptively difficult sections of the game. The downside to this race is that you really don't know where Screech is at at any point. <laughs> I'm so raring to go that I I just completely w was not aware that I was already like mashing the D-pad. If I can keep that extra hit. Nope. I knew that zinger was going to get me. Remembering the, the path of the brambles helps. Like, I knew there was going to be a little lip of bramble there that I had to look out for. Oh, damn it. Those lives are melting away. Can you imagine doing this without a save state? Like, you just jumped into this with four lives? Mm. Damn it! I need, I need, I need, I need to... <laughs> I need to be more uh, aware of my surroundings. But yeah, I don't even know where Screech is at right now. And that's that's a problem. I wish they uh they had some sort of little like Mario Kart or Diddy Kong Racing esque track layout or something, so I knew his rough location. But it's a it's a 2D track, so I'm not even sure how you could convey that in a concise way without it just being a sprawling DKC Atlas style monstrosity on screen. the lip. Alright. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, what I wouldn't give to have a Kong hanging off of Squawks right now, rather than their bodies mutated into Squawks and Squawks' soul enters it, or, or whatever happens with the uh, animal transformation barrels. 
can see. You see Screech on the side there. I'm not even sure where he goes. Man, if I could if I could get past that point with both of my heads intact. I would worry about a lot less. It's comforting, even even when you're struggling a bit, making stupid mistakes, to see that you have the bonuses and hero coin cleared out. It's reassuring, like, well, at least I don't have to worry about that. Ah. Course, this is just a precursor to the windy brambles of animal antics. At least there, you know, the game is pushing you rather than you pushing yourself. So it feels like you're not you're not as responsible for the brutality that unfolds. And that's it. Okay. Whew. I should have should have uh, deactivated Squawks higher up so I could have gotten the thing. But it's all right. I'm relieved. Let's go visit Funky. We have our out now. Everything is cool, guys. You're looking ready to ride and catch some clouds. Gotta love Funky. Cool. She's all your dudes. Catch you later. And now we have rented every Funky... Every Funky's Flights 2 plane in the game. So we have free range of access. Um, and then let's go save at Kong College. Oh, and and here you can see, oh, it's, it's the last world. It's the last regular world. And we don't even get our free save. Save game, one coin, exclamation mark. Like, yeah, we know it's bullshit. Ha ha ha. Wrinkly Kong, free. So Wrinkly is going to give us some knowledge about herself, about her own life. What don't we know about Wrinkly Kong? All but one of my lessons are useful in your quest. What could that mean? Which one? I'm trying to think which one couldn't plausibly be useful. <laughs> Do you think, like, the... Um, the team was just checked out at this point. Like, they were like, let's just, let's just have this joke that costs three banana coins. And you, you, don't, you don't get the payoff unless you actually pay for that tip. I think most gamers don't, right? I don't think most gamers pay for any of these tips. So they might read the free ones. So to see, they'll, they'll get the setup, but they'll never get the payoff to that. Um, I admire it. I, ad I admire the kind of multi-tiered comedy stylings of Rare. It's it's structured in such a way, using the medium of video games to tell a joke that charitably maybe only 5% of the people who actually play the game will see, and maybe only like 3% will understand that that was the joke. I admire that. That is that is uh, a commitment to the craft of comedy. And yeah, we're uh, we're here at the end, or what what looks to be the end, and we're only at eighty two percent, which should tell you how much is left of the game, even beyond this. K rule duel. Actually, let me let me get Diddy in a lead here. It just feels better. This is his game. Donkey Kong Country 3 is Dixie's game. Um, oh, and actually, let me do this, too, which I forgot. Okay, there, there we go. All right, 
So anyway, uh, I feel like Dix Diddy should be in the lead going into K. Rule Duel uh, with Dixie following. But K. Rule Duel, I think it's safe to say, is the best boss battle in the history of Donkey Kong. Any Donkey Kong game, you rank the boss battles. I really do feel like K. Rule Duel is the finest example. There are other good ones. And... Uh, there are even other good K. Rule fights, but this is the best. Everything about this, everything about the structure, the design, it's fun, it's clever, it builds on itself, it's hard, it's challenging, but never in a way that makes you feel like, ow, this game is just miserable. It, it, it feels like, no, this game is tough, but I can get better. I just need to keep putting in the practice. So uh, I love it. I love K. Rule Duel. Uh, let's see how good I'm at, I, I am at it though, because it it is hard. All right, here we go. Uh, this is just the best intro. I mean, the brutality of that. He beats Donkey Kong with the hilt of his blunderbuss, and then shoot. Oh fuck! Shoots him at point blank range. And yeah. Before, in Donkey Kong Country and Donkey Kong Land, the, the mechanics of the K. Rool fight involved him throwing around his crown, landing on his bald head. And here, the whole fight is centered around his blunderbuss, which I love. This is my introduction to what a blunderbuss was as a kid. Oh, I, I feel like I, my head's out of this. I really... I'm really not prepared to for this and it like mentally and then Donkey Kong comes back down oh nope nope psych so now it becomes dodging his ammunition kind of taking those cannonballs from the first game and then shrinking them down into a horizontal alignment I love it now the question is, you know, K. Rule's head was vulnerable in country and land, the, the original games. So, does this mean his tri-corner hat, his his pirate hat, is lined with like metal or something to protect it? Damn it! And then there goes Dick Dixie. Okay. So now I have to go through this cycle again because I did not successfully impregnate the blunderbuss with a cannonball. Luckily, this is doable. Oh, shit. Well, I got too close. Well, okay. That's fine. That's fine. And just how cool of a design is... Uh, I guess that's not a tri-corner hat. I, why do I always feel like he's going to start sucking right away? No. Didn't get it close enough. You actually have to, like... you. Get, the suction will only take it so far, you have to get it close enough for it to kind of touch. But yeah, that's such a great design for K. Rule. It's it's a shame in, in some ways that the king design is the default. Because I mean, if if what if what if that was his default? I think that's such a cooler look. I like the king design, but the king design feels like a parody of Bowser in a lot of ways. And in a lot of ways, K. Rule is kind of a parody of your the stock 2D platforming bosses. He started off that way, at least. He kind of evolved into its own thing. But um, Captain K. Rule is just such a cool look. That jacket, oh my god. I wish that jacket was in Sea of Thieves. I do really love that Ultimate incorporated the blunderbuss and the pirate hat. So even if, you know, we're never going to get Captain K. Rule as a persona adopted by K. Rule again, at least two really defining attributes of Captain K. Rule have been preserved by the kingmaker that is Super Smash Brothers. The, yeah, and now K. Rool can do trick shots with his blunderbuss. Like, what is this? That's that's one. It's one magic blunderbuss. 
Oh, Mr. Kyle's Twitch says he can't suck right away. You've got to take him to dinner first. Hey, oh! Rim shot. I can't do a rim shot with just my mouth. You gotta take me to dinner first. Alright. Actually, I think Dixie is maybe the better character here. Diddy is a little bit more nimble speed wise. Shit. But Dixie's helicopter spin can evade so much of this nonsense. Funny, this is like the first time Dixie and K. Rule ever interact in the series. And just the details in the background there, you've got the Super Nintendo controller uh, with the, the buttons for the uh, NTSC region. And, you know, in, in PAL regions and elsewhere around the world. You're gonna have just the Super Famicom colors. It was my theory that, you know, they had to change the buttons. <laughs> and and that's why the game was delayed by like two weeks in the Americas, but that's not true. Okay, got those uh, bananas from DK's Horde that have somehow stayed good for over a year <laughs> and, and K, K. Rule still got them like he didn't apparently Donkey Kong didn't get all of his bananas back there there are still like a couple giant bananas that K. Rule's kept maybe maybe he um he found a way to preserve them with chemicals maybe that's what Toxic Tower is about We got uh, oil drums in the background, too. The only appearance of oil drums is they don't appear in actual levels in this game. But that one oil drum just above Dixie right now, I always mistook that for an eye as a kid. And I was like, why is there a single eye looking at me? It wasn't until I was a little bit older that I realized, oh yeah, it's an O. I love the, the goofy eye-popping effects, which were seen in Donkey Kong Country 1 when um, like Donkey would get on a ledge and he would do the, you know, the cartoony eye-bugging. And you know, it's, it's here in this game whenever they approach a boss. But uh, I, I like that that also became part of the Smash Reveal trailers, the, the DKU Smash Reveal trailers in Smash Ultimate. It's a good way to reveal K. Rule to have that eye popping effect. I guess they didn't use it in Best Friends, but the Banjo Kazooie reveal. All right, I have Dixie now, so hopefully I can get past the swirly whirlies here. At the very least, get to the next cycle where Donkey Kong sends down the DK barrel. Oh, I like even the barrel does the twirly whirly. And K. Rool just passes out when it blows up, backfires on him. I like to think it's an antique blunderbuss. Oh, and here we've got the chemicals. So that will freeze you. We actually see where the chemicals are manufactured in Duncan Country 3, which is really cool. Phew. All right, good timing there. In uh, Mechanos and elsewhere in the Northern Hemisphere, they have these pipelines where they make these chemicals. Oh no, now I'm slow. Okay. That could have been disastrous, but Dixie, you take the lead. And okay, here we go. The reverse controls. Ah, ha, 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 ha. not today, K. Rule. Oh shit. 
So why does he turn invisible? I don't know. He's got a cloaking mechanism. When I was a kid playing this, I, I was like, did he die? Is, is this his ghost? But then I was like, no, because where's the body? Bye. Uh, and here we go, the big hero moment for Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong finishes the job. You've gotten him that far. And K. Roll bounces off the island and gets eaten by sharks. <laughs> oh, I knew you'd do a ditty, my boy, but how could you fail having learned all you know from old Cranky here? You rescued that lazy grandson of mine and dumped K. Roll in his own filthy swamp. Not bad for a novice. Of course, if I'd been playing, I'd have made sure that K. Roll never tries a tre cheap trick like this again. And to that I argued when I was a kid. He was eaten by sharks, Cranky. He's dead. I reckon I found all the crime coins and completed the so-called lost world. Oh well, can't expect everything from your first game, can we? I mean, third game, but okay. One more thing. How many of my special video game hero coins did you find? A real player, such as myself, would have found plenty, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's see how well you did. Eh? Eh? <laughs> well, I've got a second screen, and about time to... And this time... Oh, now shut up, everyone, while I read the eagerly awaited results of my prestigious video game Hero Awards. Hey, not bad for a young'un. Of course, you're going to have to find a few more if you want to be as big a hero as I was. If you want to look at your limited progress on this screen, press the top left and right buttons while you are on any of the map screens. So, uh, now buzz off and see if you can find more of my coins, which I very much doubt you will. So, I always uh, took this to be in the back of the monkey museum, like the, the back storage room. Um, and in my head canon, those are animatronics of Mario, Yoshi, or Link, if you didn't actually do well enough to even make the podium. Link would have been there. And it's like the Link to the Past kind of Link. Like, very, very, like, pre Ocarina of Time old school link. I love the end credits music here, the, the character parade music. It's such a triumphant, swashbuckling feeling. Like, you've, you've accomplished something amazing, kid. And I, I love how contemplative this and the end credits to Donkey Kong Country are just uh it, it really does convey so much of what the spirit of the game is about hello to solaris night seven solaris night seven perhaps um yeah i i think that this this first ending to the game where you know you don't you don't get a big scene or anything you you see k roll getting eaten by sharks on the map screen it's still amazing it's still such a feeling of achievement so the night i beat this i i probably beat k rule's duel i was with my friend Elliot, who I often talk about, my childhood friend who I played a lot of these early DKU games with, like up through Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, honestly. Um, although, you know, after, probably after 1999, we didn't hang out quite as much, so I would play them on my own. But I, um, I played the original three Dunk on Country and the original three land games, I guess the only three land games with him as well as like Diddy Kong Racing and Banjo-Kazooie. And I, he was over at my house because our families were going to go out to dinner that night. And so I 
we, we decided to try our luck at K. Rolls Duel again because we've been trying all afternoon and failing. So we booted up on my Super Nintendo. We went at it. And we, we beat K. Rule probably around 6 p.m. right before we were heading out for dinner. And so we were like having to tell our families, hey, we hold on, you're just gonna have to hold on like five more minutes. We have to watch all the end credits. Whoops, we have to watch the end credits. We have to uh, really just savor this. We just beat, we were telling them we beat the game. We knew we didn't beat the game, but it, it kind of helped sell our case that we, we couldn't shut off the Super Nintendo yet. And um, yeah, I thought K. Rule was dead. I thought they had actually like killed him off right there because at that point, nobody had that much attachment to K. Rule. Uh, if, if anything, like he had served his purpose. And obviously we know, we now know at one point they were planning on having Clubba be the final boss of the game in the Lost World. And then this would have been K. Rule's exit. Whether or not he would have returned in a future game, who knows? I don't think the team was thinking in those terms. Or like, well, the, he's going to be the most iconic Donkey Kong villain. They weren't thinking like that. Um, the legend of K. Rule had not really become the legend of K. Rule yet. He was this goofy character who had been in three Donkey Kong games. And if this was his last appearance, uh, I, I don't think anybody would have really cried in 1995. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought K. Rule was dead. And I think we went to a seafood restaurant that night. I don't, I don't remember, but... I mean, I, I do remember. I remember there being, like, seafood on the menu. I don't know if it was actually a seafood restaurant. But, um... Yeah, it just, like, I, I kept thinking, like, wow, I can't believe Duncan Country 2 had the, the fortitude to kill off the main villain of the series. So it was a bit deflating <laughs> when I found out, no, he wasn't dead. Obviously, I'm much more relieved now because K. Rool is such a wonderful character, such a wonderful villain that, no, you can't kill him off. But I like that you did have the um, the catharsis of seeing him getting eaten by sharks after what he did to Donkey Kong. For Donkey Kong to uppercut his jaw, send K. Rool bouncing down his own island, and then getting uh, gobbled by sharks. It, it was just a very triumphant moment in a way that I don't think you ever really got a, against Bowser, right? Could Bowser would like fall in lava, but you never saw his, you, you never really felt any true violence behind that. And, and this one was K. Rool getting just, like how would he, how could he survive that, right? There, there's a way, there's an in-universe rationale how he survived it, but. I think that's the first credit for Lee Love Day in the game. Story Lee Love Day. Yeah. You gotta love the way Rare, uh, I say that sarcastically, the way they would only give the first initial. Uh, partly this was to cloud their staff in anonymity because they didn't want their staff poached by other studios. Uh, which I guess I understand, but these people deserve all the credit. And just to see, like, C. Sutherland? Like, no, it's Chris Sutherland. Uh, we should shout that name far and wide. Greg Mails. Uh, the, these are the people who gave us this game, and they are brilliant. So I, I do appreciate how they are celebrated today. When everybody, when everybody talks about how bad social media has been for society, which I, I will agree, it, it's done a lot of harm. One good contribution social media has had is that it's allowed the creators behind these games to get their due by interacting with fans. So uh, I like that little, uh, I, don't, I don't know what you would call that little symbol, that little flowery flourish there. Hey, what are you waiting for? There ain't no secret stuff hidden here, Sonny. Oh my god, I did not remember this. There is, however, a couple of special features on the game selection page, though I'm sure they're of little use. 
To find these silly options, press down lots of times, but if I were you, I wouldn't bother. Now switch this cartridge off and let me get some sleep. I reckon I've earned it. What have you done, Cranky? I didn't remember there was that little tag there. So, what Cranky was talking about. Actually, I don't even know how to access it. Maybe, maybe we'll do that once we actually beat the game. We'll go through all of the little uh, extra stuff there. So, five hours and 30 minutes. 75 hero coins, 30... Or, 75 creme coins, 34 hero coins. Six away from having all of the hero coins in the game. Uh, downside to this is that, yes, I've been using save states, but the game forces you out of your file when you beat K. Rool. So now I'm going back in, and I don't have my stuff. I don't have my banana coins. I don't have my lives. I, I am, I am, the only thing I have is the progress I've made. And it does, thankfully, save, like, that you've beaten K. Rule there. I like that I did it with Diddy. That always feels right and proper when you defeat it with the main Kong. Like, I never feel right if I defeat K. Rule in Donkey Kong Country with Diddy. Although I have. I think I did it on DK Vine done slow. But, uh, same thing, I don't feel right if I beat K. Rule with Chaos. Or with, with Chaos. With Kitty, excuse me. I don't feel right if I beat K. Rule with Kitty in Donkey Kong Country 3. It has to be Dixie. I don't know, it's just one of those things. So I, I should get some lives. Because I am bankrupted right now. I, I wish it, like, at least somehow preserved your lives in Banana Coins the first time you re-enter it. I guess it didn't really matter back in 1995. Save states have spoiled me so much. So we have about an hour of the stream left. Um, so I, I will start the Lost World, but I'm just gonna go through some of these early stages and collect lives, collect banana coins, and kind of reflect on what this game has meant to me and what it meant to me in 1995. Because 1995, I don't want to oversell that I had a difficult childhood because, in all honesty, I didn't. I had a pretty good childhood. But, you know, I, I was an awkward kid. I, I was unsure, you know. Even then, I suffered from anxiety and depression. I just didn't realize it or recognize what it was. And um, school, especially during those uh, adolescent years, you know, it, it could be stressful. It, it, I never felt like I fit in. And Donkey Kong Country 2 came out. And it kind of gave me this refuge. Uh, this, this, this place where I could escape to have an amazing adventure. And It, it was a, a place that made sense, even if it was like a, a weird, a weirdo, you know, cartoon universe with monkeys and whatnot. But I don't know. It it was it kept me sane. I think during a time in my life where school and having to interact with peers was the most stressful and unassured time in my life, and. No, I, I will always um, view these games as like something more than just my favorite games. They're kind of a part of me. And even as like I started feeling more comfortable in who I was and I, 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 I realized like I was not a class clown, but somebody who liked to make people laugh and... 
that I didn't really necessarily have to fit in with everyone to be happy. Um, these games have stayed a part of me. I think rare and rare sense of humor really did, like, give me that lifeboat during during the time in the mid-90s when it's like I, I never felt like I fit in, but I felt like Rare got me, if that makes any sense. And then especially when I found uh, Rare's website and I don't know. It, it, it was... It was, it was uh, a meaningful time in my life that got me to adulthood in one piece. I also didn't like pirates for this game. I never understood pirates and what the appeal of pirates in fiction or history for that matter were like like I liked I liked Donkey Kong Country because I liked jungles I liked that adventure aesthetic you know old hidden temples and I liked nature and the forest and just uh, it ticked so many boxes for me uh, but I didn't like pirates and pirate ships and old galleons and, and sailing and like, none of that held any appeal to me as a kid and it was Donkey Kong Country 2's presentation of it that made me realize why it was cool. And, and that's why I see if Thieves was a big deal when it got announced. A lot of people were disappointed um, in, in our fan community because it wasn't a new banjo game or whatever. Uh, but it was like, oh my god, it's, a, it's an entire game about rare pirates. The pirates that got me into pirates to begin with as a, as a trope, you know. Um, and I just love that this, this aesthetic right here, this genre of storytelling has remained a part of the DNA of the DKU to this day. And I'm not just talking about Sea of Thieves. I'm, even in the Donkey Kong series, this is still so heavily associated with the Donkey Kong series as much as jungles. Not as much, but just underneath jungles and mine carts. And I mean, you, you even see that in Retro's games. I love how in Donkey Kong Country Returns, they even incorporated pirate ships. Um, Mass Blast is one of the greatest stages in Dunk on Country Returns. The secret pirate ship level. Like, you, don't, you think it's going to be one thing, and then all of a sudden, nope. It's a pirate ship level. How many times am I going to play Pirate Panic? I, I, I got a couple more. Just a good way to restock myself. After the game forced me out of it. I wonder what other storytelling traditions I became a fan of because of Donkey Kong or Rare or the DKU. I'm trying to think. Um... Like I liked bears before I liked bears before Donkey Kong Country 3, right? But I think I guess it, it made bears more special. <laughs> that sounds stupid. Like I loved apes and monkeys before Donkey Kong, right? Part of the appeal of Donkey Kong for me was that it was a series, damn it, with apes and monkeys and I mean, that's why I liked, that's why I played the original arcade, or rather the NES versions of the arcade, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., before Donkey Kong Country was even a thing. It was like, oh my god, there's a, there's a game with Mario in it, but there's gorillas? And then I played Donkey Kong Jr. on the same cartridge, it was Donkey Kong Classics for the NES, and I was like, oh my god, I can play as the baby gorilla? 
and I can and Mario's the bad guy. That feels right to me. I I I much rather play as the gorilla, because you know you always saw gorillas like demonized, scary things in popular culture, and even as a kid I knew they were more gentle creatures than uh, they were given credit for. Like King Kong had done for gorillas what Jaws did for sharks. They right? painted them in a very negative light. And uh, so I, I got to play as Donkey Kong Jr. in Donkey Kong Classics Donkey Kong Jr. And that was thrilling to me. And then I ran in Super Mario Kart in 1993 and I got to play as Donkey Kong Jr. And that was so cool. And then that's when Donkey Kong Country was announced and I was reading the instruction manual on the way home and I realized that there was this generational leap with the Kongs and that it, for like, in all likelihood, all right, the modern Donkey Kong, the star of Donkey Kong Country was an adult Donkey Kong Jr. That was so cool to me. And that the series really did shift to the Kong's perspective after that, it became their story, their hero quest. The story of their home and their friends. And eventually, you know, the, the entire archipelago that they lived in. Uh, Mr. Kyle's Twitch says, that's a touching story. I feel the same about these games in DK Vine to some extent. These funny animal platforms introduced me to my first online friend group and my first online forum. And hey, Malik shows up. Malik says, what I miss? Well, I, I rescued Donkey Kong and now I'm getting lives and banana coins because the game forces you out of your save file. And I feel like I need a little bit of a cushion going into the Lost World. And hello to Hibby Sloth. Hibby Sloth with Snorkel the Dolphin. Yeah, and that's that's like another thing. Like I always imagined playing these games that there would be there could be like a vibrant fan community for them. Because it was me and Elliot, right? And then reading Nintendo Power. That that was the extent of my f fan outreach for these games. And I after I beat Donkey Kong Country 2, I it was all about when Donkey Kong Land 2 was coming out, when Donkey Kong Country 3 would come out, when when would we get news on the N64 Donkey Kong or the Virtual Boy Donkey Kong, which never came to pass, but you know. Um, I was all in on this series at that point. When I beat this game, it, it was all about what's next. And I like to imagine, like, wouldn't it be great? Because this was the mid-90s. The internet was a thing, but it wasn't ubiquitous. It wasn't in every household. We didn't yet know that it was going to define our entire lives. Going forward, I didn't realize, like, my career would be centered around having a website. I didn't even know what a website really was, you know? But I, I imagined, like, wouldn't it be cool to have this like fan run newsletter because I, I knew about that right I guess fanzine uh, would be a, a term for it but I didn't know that word wouldn't it be cool if I could reach other fans of the Donkey Kong Country series and so I just like <laughs> overshot that so so yeah I, I would imagine like reaching out for them having columns articles like Having a place where people could express hype for Donkey Kong Country 3 before it had even been announced. And of course, that eventually became DK Vine. Uh, not even, not even four years after that. It's it's wild to me because it feels like an eternity between beating this game and launching DK Vine. It was only four years. To put that in perspective, four years ago. Almost four years ago was when K. Rule was announced in Smash, which feels like yesterday, right? Um, that's wild. That's that makes me feel old. <laughs> uh, time speeds up so much when you get older. And yeah, after, but like, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here because after I had uh, beaten K. Rule Duel and I thought K. Rule was dead and that there was something in the Lost World, 
obviously the end game, but I didn't know what the end game really looked like. I had theories. And I think I had the theory that it was going to involve the destruction of Crocodile Isle. But I didn't really know what that would look like. Um, but th this was going... This, this was, I think, still before Christmas when I beat K. Rool Duel. And, okay, I think that's good. I think that's a good cushion. I'm almost back to where I was. Life-wise, especially after I blew through them in Screech's Sprint. I died more times in Screech's Sprint than I died in K. Rool Duel. That was definitely not the case back in 1995. But yeah, I uh, beat K. Rool, I think maybe a week before Christmas, honestly. It, it, it was somewhere around there, because I think part of the reason we went out to dinner with Elliot's family was just because it was like, let's go out dinner for the holidays. And it might have been the start of, like, winter break. It might have been the, um, when we got out for Christmas and Hanukkah and, and whatever. I don't know when Hanukkah was that year. But, it, it yeah, it, it was, I think, the Friday um, where we got out for school. And I went over to Elliot's house and we started K. Rule's Duel. And we couldn't beat him. I took the cartridge home with me to my my parents house because and then we beat it there and then we all went out to dinner but um then it became going into january we had the blizzard of 96 which makes me sound like an old timey man talking about oh i remember the blizzard of 96 but it, it was like one of the last significant blizzards virginia had before like climate change warmed it up where we wouldn't have such significant snowfalls and um, everything was shut down for about a week and a half to two weeks. And so we were out of school almost immediately after going back to school in January after the winter break. And then that snow t period, um, like I, I still got together with Elliot while we were like snowed out from school. And that whole period became what you're about to see right now the journey to the lost world and actually beating donkey kong country 2's most difficult stages and yeah at, at this point like we had already played lost world stages right like we had already like cashed in some of our cram coins to club's kiosk but we hadn't beaten them all and we definitely hadn't beaten animal antics so it it was um it was, it was a, a magical time in my childhood that I remember very distinctly where everything revolved around Donkey Kong Country 2. School stopped. School stopped. I had no other obligations. It My life revolved around finishing this game and getting 102%. So let's go. Wow, that's a weird spelling of doubloons. I hate it. It's not, it's not how you spell them must be Clubba's accent. And then, tis me ape mates, the barrel is yours. That's racist, Clubba, because they're not apes, they're monkeys, all right? And here we go, the lost world of the Kremlins. This takes place deep beneath Crocodile Isle in an underground cavern that has heat and life thanks to that thing in the middle. That thing in the middle, is the, the the area itself is called the Crocodile Core. That energy beam pulsating out of it is the Kremlin source power. The instruction manual describes it as the source of the Kremlins. That is, uh, we don't really know what it is, right? Um, I mean, this, this plays on a lot of uh, tropes borrowed from elsewhere. Um, one thing that hit home close to me was the end of the show Lost actually incorporated something very similar to this at the heart of that island. And uh, what it is is up to open to interpretation, but it, I've always described it, writing for DK Vine, as mystical earth energies uh, that, that evolved a lot of the wildlife on Crocodile Isle into the forms we know in the Kremlin crew. So, for example, we've got 
crocodiles that are transformed into all the different kinds of Kremlings, thanks to their proximity to that Kremlin source energy. Uh, a, a honeybee becomes a zinger, uh, and and so forth. A, a dragonfly becomes a flitter. You know that this is where all that comes from. This is why Crocodile Isle and the Kremlin crew have unique takes on all sorts of wildlife. It was evolved by the Kremlin source. This is just all extrapolated from the instruction manual, but this is why you read the instruction manual because you understand the lore, baby. Anyway, so this is the holiest place of the Kremlings. This is where Kremlin life began. And uh, here we are kind of trespassing on it. Just a little bit. Uh, we, we, we paid our way in, though. And, of course, Cranky already has a monkey museum set up here because Cranky has his fingers in every pie. Um, the Master DS said, did Lee ever sign off on any of this? I mean, Lee wrote that this was the source of the Kremlings. So, you know, I, I don't know if he would agree with my assessments about it being a... I don't know, a, a, a mystic, like, like I, I even studied the ley line maps and see, see if Crocodile Isle would intersect with any of them. We're getting into some new age woo-woo philosophies here, uh, but let's go visit Cranky. Well, 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 if it isn't our trainee hero, I didn't expect you to find this place, Sonny. You must have got lucky. Now that you're here, I'd better tell you about it. This here's the Kremlin's lost world. And that big crocodile head in the middle is where you need to get to if you're going to finish this silly game properly. But to get there, you have to beat Captain K. Rule and complete all of the bonus levels as well. A task I'm sure is well beyond a whippersnapper like you. I don't know what, why I'm doing this, but here are some ridiculously cheap hints for this world, which I'm sure you'll be needing as well. I can re recommend the really expensive ones, actually. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're all two coins. None of them are free here. Jungle Jinx. Just before halfway, take time to look back at what you've done. Ah, that's pretty obvious, Cranky. Black Ice Battle. After the slope with the letter N, press right as you fall, and you'll have a ball. Ugh. Clobber Carnage. Down may be out, but right picks you up. He loves his directional puns, this cranky. The bananas point the way. Fuck you! That's not a hint. The bananas point the way everywhere. Animal antics. The end is not the end. <laughs> Isn't that a U2 song? I don't know. Remember, I'm the most useful of the Kongs, and the cheapest. Uh-huh. So, the, the way the Lost World is structured in this game is that each club is kiosk point in Crocodile Cauldron, Krem Key, Crazy Kremland, Gloomy Gulch, and K. Rolls Keep. Although, that club is kiosk is actually located on Donkey Kong Island. Anyway, uh, each one will take you to one Lost World stage. This is a bit different than even the way the Lost World would be structured in Donkey Kong Land 2, which is the same Lost World. Um, Kramatoa, you know, Secret Seclusion, any other Lost World in the Donkey Kong series. The Lost World from Donkey Kong Land 3 that the radio station had a contest to find. <laughs> um, each one, it, they, they just, you enter it, you proceed in a linear fashion here. You can play them in any order so long as you've bought access to it. Although I do recommend playing them in the order they're laid out because they get harder. So Jungle Jinx, which of course is a play on Jungle Hijinx, the first level in any Donkey Kong Country game, uh, is the first jungle level in this game. We're finally seeing Kremlin jungles. And as you can see, they are a lot more gnarly gnarled and imposing than the friendly jungles of Donkey Kong Island. I love these Venus fly traps in the background. Like, like just those little thoughts put into all of this. Like, how can we make this jungle seem more intimidating, more deadly than the jungles in Donkey Kong Country or Land? Well, we're gonna 
have the foliage be carnivorous plants. And then we've got tires. Now, tires haven't been in this game until this point. These are like monster truck tires that are just rolling about. The only appearance of tires in this Donkey Kong game. So, and we've got these spikes with skulls on them. And I think those are supposed to be monkey or gorilla skulls. Some sort of uh, primate skulls. But, uh, because they, they are not crocodilian. So, I, I think they are the skulls of maybe those who have tried to get to the Kremlin source energy. And tried to exploit it for either their own evolution or to, to bring down the Kremlins. I don't know. Could have been an artifact of a past Kong Kremlin war. Maybe the the wars, you know, hinted at. I'm not even the Crimean War, but like the the conflict that drove the Kremlins from Donkey Kong Island initially, which I believe is uh, where the Tiki Tak tribe originally came into play. All right, so this is this is just uh, there we go. Oh no, I hit the zinger. Shit. I love. I love the um, music and just presentation of these jungle stages. They, I mean, I, I heard complaints on the DK Vine forum back in the day. I died. I don't even care. Um, I love that. I don't know, this this just feels more bombastic than the jungle levels, and, I, and compl there were complaints on the DK Vine forum back in, I, I don't know, the, the mid-aughts that this theme song sounded like the Calypso theme from the Cosby Show, which I can hear it, um, although I think this will have more cultural stain power now than the Calypso theme from the Cosby Show. Uh, Donkey Kong wins. Because uh, the Cosby Show will never be <laughs> aired in good conscience ever again. So, uh, point for Donkey Kong Country 2 and Jungle Jinx. They, uh, they, they, they had a render of this stage. A, a scenic render of Diddy and Dixie and Squawks. I think Nintendo... Yeah, it was what Nintendo Power used on the cover of... Uh, trying to go back because the, uh, Cranky's hint reminded me that there was something back there. So you, yeah, in the December 95. <laughs> Alright. Alright. That's just gonna happen. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die plenty in the Lost World. Get used to it. I feel no shame. I'm just help... I'm, I just, I'm just helping to sell the difficulty of the, uh, the level and the world. There we go. Hibby Sloth says, I remember that lizard fellow Virginian here. Yeah, that was a fun one, wasn't it? I, uh, I remember... It might have been after... Oh! It might have been after I had beaten the Lost World. Officially. And, uh... Like went outside to play in the snow. I remember building a snow squitter. That's how like obsessed I was at that point with Donkey Kong. I, I built a snowman, but it was squitter and I used sticks for his legs. I don't think I built the shoes because I was lazy. It was supposed to be squitter and I rode him. And as you can see, the hero coins are the prize now of the Lost World's bonus areas because we're done with we're done with creme coins uh we we've already got them all but yeah you you don't get creme coins in the lost world so you you can play all the lost world stages uh back to back to back to back at the at the end if you so choose which is what we're doing and it's also nice because you know there's only one bonus stage in each Lost Worlds level, so. Also, I just love when you crouch down with Dixie and her fingers take a second to stretch out. Just such a nice little detail. Ah. 
shades of Snow Barrel Blast right there. Except, you know, Snow Barrel Blast didn't have giant, massive monster truck tires. Where, 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 where are these coming from? Why, why is the, like, was there a monster truck rally on Crocodile Isle at some point? And did the, the, the refuse from it, like, wash down into the Lost World Cavern? I, I, I don't understand why there are this many tires. Nope, 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 don't, don't do that. Anything over here? I love the, the jungle gates of the jungle stages here in the Lost World. I don't, I don't know, like, it's, it's one of our only looks at ancient Kremlin architecture, like more ancient than even the Kremlantis architecture that we see in country and land. This, this is like earliest early Kremlin architecture right here. Hey, I actually got all the Kong letters for once. Sweet. The master of the Nintendo DS says, Kremlins love trucks. I, sp I mean, I could see it. I just, we've never actually uh, seen them have a truck rally, have we? Donkey Kong has a real life monster truck. I, I've never seen K. Rule have one though. Also, gotta point out, so, it, it's not something most people notice right away, but after you beat a Lost World stage, you see the lake in the middle. There's a little nub at the, at, at, at the point on the shore there, a little gray nub. That, you, don't, you can't even tell what it is, what's happening, but uh, a bridge is starting to form, and beating a Lost World stage will cause more and more of the bridge to, I guess, rise up. I guess that's what happens. I guess the bridge is rising from the, uh, the lake, but yeah, slowly making your way, giving you access to the crocodile core. All right, let's do another Lost World stage, I guess. I really feel like I should save my game just in case something goes catastrophically wrong along the way. 89%. Five more hero coins to go. I am down to 60 creme coins. That feels like I've lost progress. It, it never takes, obviously it doesn't take away your percentage totals, but it, it's weird that the game like doesn't recognize that you have collected 75 hero coins except in the percentages. Like, like there's no secondary tally that says like, yes, you may not physically have this many creme coins on you, but you did get them at one time. We're not chimps, Clubba. Stop being racist. Over here, Kongs, the Kremlin Lost World awaits ye. Are, if, if, I feel like if they, uh, if they made this game nowadays, they wouldn't have him say awaits ye because people, idiots, would take that to be a Kanye reference. Although given, you know, like, I don't know, maybe I'm going to start a rumor that Kanye got the Ye name from, because he's a big Clubba fan, same way Sean Combs is a big Diddy Kong fan. Black Ice Battle. So, this could, theoretically, be your first Ice Cavern level in Donkey Kong Country 2, if you access this earlier than reaching K. Rule's Keep and the Ice Caverns there. So... I was under the impression, because that's what I did in my first playthrough of Donkey Kong Country 2, I was under the impression that maybe the Lost World was going to consist of archetypes from Donkey Kong Country that weren't anywhere else in Donkey Kong Country 2. So I was like, oh, the first level is a jungle level, the second level is an ice cavern le level, like slip slide ride, maybe 
just maybe the third level or the fourth level will be a factory level because we haven't seen factory levels. I was wrong. Very wrong. All right. Wah! Ah. And then there's so many clobbers just lining this uh, level. The, uh... I apologize if there's some noise in the background. The lawn people are here to mow, I guess, around the... the outer exteriors and I guess trim the hedges? I don't know what they're doing, but they're making a little bit of noise. Hopefully it's not being picked up. I should have a big sign up that says, I am streaming Donkey Kong Country 2. Come back later. But I don't have any say in when they come, unfortunately. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, thought I was gonna lose some lives there. Worked out okay. And I am losing lives. I'm losing so many lives. Okay. Well, that was worthless. I do like the, uh, the look of the ice caverns in this game. Like, obviously it's not as beautiful as Slip Slide Ride is, but I like, just like everything in this game, has elements of beauty, but it just feels more dangerous. And, uh, I don't know. Okay. Okay, I got I got that. No. All right. All right. Thankfully I didn't screw that up. I can still screw this up, though. But nope, I got it. That was weirdly easy. I don't know, I was expecting it to be worse. I remember it being worse, and I think part of that is because... I, I don't know how these are weighted difficulty-wise. Now, here is where I'm gonna die. I, I, I always screw this up. Yep, yep. Yup, yup, yup. But I, I don't know how they're weighted for difficulty because playing this like, when I was in Krem Key or, or maybe Crazy Kremland, I forget like when I actually went back and accessed Black Ice Blitz, but it, it felt like one of the hardest stages in the game at that point, but coming off of K. Rolls Keep and Flying Croc, it's not you know, it, it's, it doesn't feel nearly as difficult, but because I played this game when, or played this level when I did, I think it, this level has a reputation in my own head as being far more difficult than it actually is. A lot of uh, spiny and clamp on doubling up, and yeah, I, I wish I had Diddy, but yeah, there we go. I just have to get close enough to the zinger to bypass their spiky backs. Oh, Jeffren, Jeffren says, our lawn people are here too, so I can't tell where it's coming from. 
And the Master DS asked, do you think they intended there to be multiple ice caves in the first game? That's also the only vertical level in DKC1. I, you know, it's hard to say what they intended. I, I, I don't know. Um, I am sure there was some regret that they couldn't do more with it. Hence why we got ice caverns in the sequel. I, I know the original Donkey Kong Country is a game full of little compromises to make sure it got out in time for the holiday season, which is why, you know, Chimp Caverns exist as it does instead of having lava levels, which they then finally got around to in Donkey Kong Country 2. So, um, and you see the bridge is starting to form a little bit more. By this point, you're probably realizing that a bridge is starting to form. Maybe you're still oblivious. I... I I imagine a lot of people would notice it, but I would also imagine that people would notice the Gangplank Galleon getting closer and closer in the original Donkey Kong Country, and most people don't. So, you know, incrementally changing things on the map screen go over a lot of people's heads. Which I'm not. That's not, I'm not. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not. I'm not faulting anybody if they don't realize it. It just the difference between pay, paying attention to the details and just playing the game and being so engaged in gameplay that you're not looking at the little things. So we have about 15 minutes left in the stream. So that begs the question, should I just go to the next Lost World stage? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, let me save at Wrinkly. I'm gonna save at Eat Wrinkly. No. I'm gonna save at Wrinkly in each world coming out of a Lost World stage. And that also allows us to see our percentages tick up. So we're at 91%. Getting closer. Shiver me timbers, where's me loot? Cause if I don't get none, ye don't cross over, mateys. Captain K. Rule treats us rotten. I hope you scupper his plans. So that's um, one of the references that Clubba makes after you pay up the creme coins to K. Rule being a terrible, not, not just boss, but leader of their civilization. And that really feeds into the notion, uh, I, I know that I have, but a lot of other fans have, that Clubba hates K. Rule and could maybe potentially lead a rival faction or spin-off faction of Kremlings away from the Kremlin crew, especially after the events of Country 2 and Land 2. Uh, I, I still like to think and I still like to imagine that Clubba is out there, he's still out there, and he's leading a crew of pirate Kremlins who have broken away from K. Rule and, and the Kremlin crew and they're just living life on their own terms, sailing around the rare archipelago. Uh, that would be cool. It would allow the pirate Kremlins to come back at some point and, and not necessarily be associated with K. Rule. Like, I know cartoon fans will yell at me. They're like, well, that's just Captain Scurvy. They should just put Captain Scurvy in a game. No, they should use Clubba. They should use Clubba and just have the idea of Captain Scurvy be Clubba. Because Clubba is game canon, friends. Sorry. So this is the big clobber showcase, clobber carnage. And I like that already we're in our second jungle level, but they, you, they've tinted this differently. So it's a little bit more yellow a little bit more dry and crackly. I don't know. Um, let me let me let me let me point out this too, because it needs to be pointed out. Um, hello. Is, are you not a clobber? Are you just a barrel? You're a clobber. Come here, clobber. Come here. All right. 
No. Okay, I just wanted to show you the death animation of clobbers when they hit the spikes. It's so satisfying. But Dixie died instead. So, you know, I, I could have used Dixie right there. There's a, there's a whole thing with Dixie there. So I, I didn't really think that through, did I? Oh, I just saw a clobber die. So yeah, this, this mix is... Uh, oh, come on. Oh, I see what I did. I thought the bananas were pointing backwards to something. But that's, the, that's if I came from that direction, then they would have just been pointing forward, and I wouldn't have blasted myself in the spikes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but this is this is also like, it's a clobber showcase, but it, pff, damn it. It's a stealth, yeah, whatever. It's a stealth showcase for barrel blasting as well. One of those uh, barrel cannon canyon, snow barrel blast type stages. Clobbers are a great idea for a baddie. What if we weaponize? All right, my I I think I think my brain is just done. It's tired. <laughs> it's done for the day. So I don't I don't even know how much of clobber carnage I'm actually going to complete here, but that's fine. Whoa. But yeah, weaponizing barrels against the Kongs. It's a clever concept. Especially since they are like one of the most iconic elements that have been retained from the original arcade Donkey Kong. And of course in that game, barrels are Donkey Kong's allies. So if you're playing as the Kongs, how do we get some of that um, barrel antagonism back into the series? Well, oh, well, this isn't good. This isn't good. In the original game, they had man original Donkey Kong Country, that is, they had Mankey Kongs throwing barrels at you, which kind of took the concept of Donkey Kong throwing barrels at Mario and and turned it against the Kongs themselves. But here, it just Kremlin's hiding in various types of barrels, which I honestly like even better than Mankey Kong, although I do love Mankey Kong. The Diddy and Dixie barrels, I don't know if they were, I don't know how successful of a concept that really is. Because it, it, it was one of the only times the game punishes players for not being a specific Kong. When I, I think that kind of flies into the face of certain gameplay um, tenets of Nintendo um, and and yeah if you're like a two-player team yeah it, it it's definitely hard because if you if you're just Diddy Kong or you're just Dixie Kong and your friend is the other then having one of these barrels that only they can use it it's it's frustrating especially because sometimes the game does reward one over the other like there there are specific instances I can think of where the Dixie barrel is the essential barrel towards getting a secret. So you can see why the Duncan Country 3 team sort of retired the concept and didn't bring it back with Dixie and Kitty barrels in Donkey Kong Country 3. I don't even know I don't even know if they were in Land 2, come to think of it. They might have gotten rid of those in Land 2. Um hello So these these timer barrels, uh, they're more generous than they appear. I think it's one of those things like Screech or Sprint where it, it's designed to psych you out. Oh my god, that's just a lethal bunch right there. Yeah, I, I, I knew it was going to result in somebody getting blown up. Like, the one second might feel like a very short amount of time, but it's actually 
an eternity when you're barrel blasting. It's it's rare that you get yourselves into get yourself into a position where you've uh, not given yourself enough time. Let's see, like I almost gave myself too much time there, but I still didn't bypass the zinger. So, hey, Captain Logan is in the chat, and Dre. Uh, Dre says, this is the true Pirate Legend stream. <laughs> Do you think K. Rule ever got Pirate Legend? To which Jeffren replied, nah, he just maxed out Reapers and called it a day. Uh, Logan asked, you don't think he was the inspiration for Ramsey? They're both rotund and green, says Jeffren, but otherwise don't think so. Um, yeah, so as, as I brought up uh, when I started the DK Vine Dun Slow series on Donkey Kong Country 2, and was in the Gangplank Galleon. Uh, if you look at the Gangplank Galleon and what it's flying, K. Rule is actually a grade four Reaper from Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Not making that up. It it it's it's identical to the pendant that a grade four Reaper, a Reaper's Bones emissary would be flying. So um, whether or not the Reaper's Bones still exist within 1995. Uh, when this game takes place, I don't, I, I don't probably not. I, I don't know where Sea of Thieves lore is going, but I very much doubt that's the case. So it's probably an antique. K. Rool found an old Grade Four Reaper's flag. Uh, it was passed down to him, and he's flying it because he does embody the spirit of the Reapers from the the era of Sea of Thieves in sometime in the early 1700s. Yeah, it's, it's, I always think of this as the clobber stage, and it is, in fact, marketed as such, but the last half of it is very, has very little to do with clobbers. It's all barrel blasting and timing this around the zingers. The last barrel blasting showcase really in the game, if you're, you're playing these chronologically at the end, like I am. Damn it, that zinger always gets me, and these zingers are going to get me too. <sighs> Zingers have been my biggest nemesis today. More so than K. Rool, even. Like, it, I've been running into Zingers more than any other baddie. Oh, that's... That's a shame. That barrel just disappears. You have to actually make it physically manifest by going back and then it will respawn. All right, well, there's Dixie back. If I can get two Kongs to uh, go through those zingers, then at least I will have some security. Because I'm sure I'm going to get hit once. But I probably need both Kongs to get the bonus. It, I think the bonus is at the end. Ah, damn it. I just whiffed that completely. Man, and I've got so far ahead of the barrel. Oh. Part of me is like, should I just keep playing? Should I just end the series today? Because I'm so close to the end. But the thing is, I in no way have the energy to do animal antics today. There, there, there's no way. Like, I, I could see animal antics being an entire stream unto itself. So... It's probably good that I, I'm trying to get as much of the Lost World out of the way rather than doing it on one stream, just because animal antics might break my spirit several times over. Oh, 
Okay. I'm going to be taken out by a kaboom. Part of my problem is I don't wait with the zingers. I, I always, like, shoot way too early. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, this, this bit... <laughs> Oh, and the balloon flies off. No. Here's where the clobbers come back. And see, you've got the banana arrow there, and... Yep. I was right. I was right. You need both Kongs at the end. Which is why those zingers are so devious. This is fun, running across the spikes. It's very satisfying. Bouncing on zingers, you don't often get to do that in Donkey Kong without an animal buddy like Winky or Ravelly. And here we are at the end. And I got a banana coin, which is probably what I would need the most. I don't think I need that many lives at this point. I say that. I say that knowing I don't do animal antics today. See, the bridge is uh, it's over halfway complete now. Actually, it looks only halfway complete. I don't know. It just it just kind of magically elongates, expands, if you will, th with the final two. So let me go ahead and get to Funky. Head to Gloomy Gulch, and I will save right here. Ninety-three percent. All right, three more hero coins to go. We are over six hours uh, with actual gameplay, but we will end next time. Yes, we will beat Donkey Kong Country Two on the next edition of DK Vine Done Slow. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Be sure, if you like pirates, to tune in this Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. British Summertime, for DK Vine Stream of Thieves. I think it's Legends Week or something like that, so we're going to be doing something legendy in Sea of Thieves because we are all pirate legends. Unlike K. Rule, who is just a poser reaper's bones emissary. That will be on Sunday. Tune in on Tuesday. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the Idaho crew will be doing at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. BST, Wednesday morning. But I think it will tie into the fifth anniversary week for ukulele. So they, they will be honoring ukulele in their own way. Uh, and then next Wednesday, I will be concluding Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 6.30 p.m. BST. I have to keep all my time zones straight in my head. I don't know how I do it. We will end Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest, and we will cause a wee little bit of accidental genocide. So uh, tune in for there. I'm sure I will spend a large part of the stream just hanging out on the uh, the the end game screen, which is beautiful and beloved. And we'll just hang out. And we'll chat, and we'll, we'll I'll answer your questions. I'll answer your DKU questions. How about that? If, if we if we wrap up too early next week, uh, that's how we'll kill the rest of the, the, the stream. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day.